So I don't know if we should save this for next week or I should pile on because I don't want the whole podcast to just be poo-poo in college. But I am reading a book that's not anti-college, but it talks about the changing atmosphere in American colleges. Do you want to talk about it now or just wait another week? So this is just Jonathan Haidt? It's called The Coddling of the American yeah. Mind. How yeah. good intentions and bad ideas are setting up a generation for failure. So you mm -hmm. want to talk about it now? Or? Go for it. Okay. So basically, this is written by a couple of professors. One is a cognitive behavior therapist. They're, they're both in the you know psychology, mental health, happiness. It's the guy, actually, a podcast comment recommended the happiness hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And this is the same author. So thank you for whoever made that comment. Basically, the high-level thesis is that three terrible ideas have become woven into American childhood and education, K through 12 and college. And they are setting up society to be worse and individuals to be less happy. So the three ideas that they think have permeated through American culture are what doesn't kill you makes you weaker. So instead of thinking that hardships are good for you, we've come to think that hardships are to be avoided. So mm -hmm. if someone says something that upsets me, they should not be allowed to say it. I have to be shielded. I need a safe space. You know what I mean? They talk about peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, they talk about how, so for instance, kids might have a peanut allergy, so certain private schools ban peanuts. Hmm. It turns out that if kids aren't around it's peanuts, they all get peanut they allergies. They get a lot more, like they're, you're five times more likely to get a peanut allergy mm -hmm. if you're not exposed to peanuts. Mm -hmm. And so, and they say this is rearing its head from birth through college. People are, are treating American kids and young adults like they're fragile. And so they try to shield them from anything that could be harmful or upsetting, including words, thoughts, ideas. And then those kids rightfully think that they're fragile because they're being raised that they're fragile. And so then when they are hit with something that they find upsetting, they demand that something protect them. The institution of the college, the government, mm -hmm. they, they say, my whole life I've been insulated and that's what I was taught was good. Now I'm not being insulated. So this is a failure of the system. It's not up to me to toughen up yeah, or yeah. learn how to debate or get comfortable hearing an idea I disagree with without it triggering me. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's the first thing. The second thing goes hand in hand with it, which is basically always trust your feelings. So there's this sense now that if someone says something and it upsets you, mm. it was offensive. It was harmful. So you're removing intent. You're removing confusion. You know what I'm saying? You, you're getting to the sense where if it is upsetting to you, then it was upsetting. It was an upsetting act. And so people are starting to be told and to believe that whatever they feel is the truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And the third thing is, and we talked about this on the podcast, life is a battle between good people and evil people. Mm. So there's this, there, well, this wasn't always the case that you would think that someone who disagreed with you politically was a monster. You know what I mean? But I don't, I, well, you know, I don't know if the, about these halcyon times. I wasn't there. So it's tough for me. I, I think it's very easy to look back and go, oh, there were these wonderful days of, of unification. Well, I think here's why. I, I think it was harder to be and maybe I'm wrong. I think it was harder to be insulated into a, an echo chamber. I think it was harder to like select your news and select so, your social media. Uh, you know, I think if you take a large enough view of this one, like we did have a civil war <laughs> like that was insulated. Oh, yeah. No, these people are comparing I to the 50s, 60s, 70s, maybe. Or yes. Like, OK, yes, they're comparing the 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 post war post war America to today. Yes. OK. Yeah. Yeah. This Got is it. not about all of human history. Got it. This is like specifically the last 30 years mm -hmm. compared to the probably 30 years like prior. a jet yeah one generation to the next I, I think i get it yeah uh and so that's it they're just saying that these are widely accepted and they go against what you would want for someone's psyche basically i mean mm -hmm. cognitive behavior therapy which we're both fans of is all about noticing your cognitive distortions and then recognizing that they're distortions and learning to lower the amount that you're emotionally triggered by something, right? Mm -hmm. That's so you think that because a girl said no to you, that that means that you're unlovable. And if you're unlovable, you'll be alone forever. And if you'll be alone forever, you'll be depressed forever. And then you go through and you figure out what, what the flaw is in each step, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the opposite of that. When you're told that words can harm you and that that harm can be devastating and traumatic to you to hear someone say something you disagree with, then you're basically getting a cognitive distortion. You're yeah. like being incepted to think that that's the case. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's it's not just that it's bad for sight. That your, inter that yes, that your internal experience is the definitive experience. 
Yes, cognitive behavior therapy is all about saying that your initial feeling, your initial reaction to something may not be true. Mm -hmm. And then what that does is it's really helpful in helping people not be depressed and not be anxious. And so the, these professors are basically like, why is anxiety and depression skyrocketing mm -hmm. on university? It's because people are being taught the opposite tools of cognitive behavior therapy, which is, yeah, if you have that big feeling of being triggered, like something caused that, you should run with that. Mm. You, should, you should assume that you're correct. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, a, it's an interesting question because you, there's, there's two poles, and, and I don't think the answer is on either one of them. On the one hand, you need to protect vulnerable people and creatures from life, which is to say like when there's a child and it's crying and it's in pain, you need to scoop it up and like pull the thorn out of its foot and and create a bubble of safety. Yeah, if your kid's born with a, yeah. some sort of weird life-threatening thing, I think you keep it. You keep your kid in the ICU for, yeah, yeah. for a week. Well, you, that, know, you don't, and you don't then, bring it out. And Here's another fascinating one. So I was a C-section baby. I didn't want to come out. I was chilling, right? So I was removed and saved my life, probably saved my mom's life. But because I wasn't a natural birth, I didn't get the bacteria and the floor of the fauna and I was in a hospital room. So I was a, then afterwards a very sick baby, ear infections, tonsil infections, like constant. So I, I guess it's not even clear that it's an age thing. It's not like, oh, like protect infants and then when they're seven, like stop protecting them. It's like you need degrees of stress that are going to be, I mean, is there anything more traumatizing than being birthed? <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. Like having your tiny little brain head squeezed. Uh, it, like they come out screaming for a reason because it's awful, I'm pretty sure. And, but ultimately good for you, mm -hmm. you know, because the things that you take with it make you more resilient to a world that is not as safe and comforting as the womb. So, it's it's unclear. It's not an age thing. It's we, I've mentioned my brother before being given the credit card when we lived abroad in Brazil and how that made him soft. While the rest of us developed our businesses, he kind of didn't really. And it was only when it was it was only when he had to get a crappy job in Las Vegas, picking up cups, paying for himself. It took him an extra year and a half compared to the rest of us because he had that. But if he didn't have the funding to go to Brazil with us, he would have stayed in his fourth and a half year getting mediocre grades, you know, in sure. in Temple University. So it's it's an unclear balancing act to me of like the stresses that people need at various points of their experience and life. Uh, and I guess I agree with the authors that it sounds like we've tilted too far in the direction of bubbles. Well, my and my thing is this can even be you can even say this isn't just this generation. You could probably find anecdotes of it throughout recent American history. But if I think if if you find yourself triggered by words, which is to say someone says something and it elevates your heart rate and it gets mm -hmm. you into fight or flight, I think that's a pretty good sign that something is occurring beyond uh, words. Yeah, just words. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like you, you feel literally threatened because I think even if someone vehemently disagrees with you it should be possible and i'm guilty of this I, I think i'm not better than other people but it should be possible to just hear the disagreement digest it and then still disagree with it and say your disagreement but mm -hmm. without that adrenaline spike or sweating or hands shaking so i think if you're in a conversation and you start to have that same reaction that mm -hmm. one would have when they're in a physical fight or when they're actually physically threatened that to, uh, to me i was like oh this is a good sign that something is happening beyond just processing what's actually occurring, which is someone's making sounds that you're, they're mm -hmm. entering your ears. Sure. Uh, presuming, and I'm just, I know that you meant this, that they're not threatening you and being like, I'm going to stab you now. Like they're, they're, sure, they're, sure. they're saying, they're, they're having a, a disagreement on a, on a political topic or no, something like that. No, I'm guilty of this too. I've, you just see it. You see when people disagree, voices get raised. Yeah. The, it stops being a conversation. It's either shouting or, yeah, you see people's adrenaline spike. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else to describe it. And, and, as I was reading this, I just realized, oh yeah, this doesn't have to be the reaction to someone saying something that you don't agree with. Mm -hmm. It can actually just be you going, oh, well, I disagree. Here's why. Yeah. And so uh, that I was like, okay, this is a pretty good argument for me to monitor in myself anytime I get triggered to one, calm down, and then two, try to figure out why and how to prevent it. Because well, it actually even makes the conversation, it's it's worse for you. You know what I mean? Sure. Like it's just a self. Well, this has been this has been a 
And we talked earlier about building ourselves a bubble from comments, you know, and and I'm not sure that it's the right thing to do, but the alternate strategy is to read all of mm -hmm. the most vitriolic comments, to watch that reaction arise in you, to stay awake, kicking them around in your mind and disagreeing and saying why they, and eventually break through to the point of inoculation against that. And uh, there's this constant tension in life because the generation before us would be like, look, anyone, well, not before us, I guess the World War II generation, if you haven't had a mortar explode behind you, like there's no reason to be financially scared. Yeah. There's no reason to be scared when somebody says they're gonna punch you. You know, like there's there's degrees of this in life. Uh, and it's it's a constant question of when do I want to bubble up and and protect myself from this, and when do I want to lean into it and try to find out if I can become immune to this particular stressor. Yeah. Well, my I mean, this again, this isn't the perfect answer, but this is just my answer today, Jan 1, 2021, is I'm trying to in general pull into my actual reality, mm -hmm. which is to say I'm trying to get away from social media, yeah. trying to get away from the news, which I've decided is just an outrage machine mm -hmm. and not a informative machine. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get away from comments. And what I'm trying to do is pull into who's around me. And so when I'm having a, re a discussion face to face, I think it's super important not to shut down, yeah, yeah. scream at them or run away just because they say something I don't agree with. I actually think that's the time to sit down, work on being calm and work on the discussion. Be open minded to the fact that I might be wrong. I think that's that's the, the area for growth and that's yep. the area for focus. But for me, uh, in general, I am I question if the juice is worth the squeeze on all the stuff that is virtually external, yeah. if that makes sense. I, Fox I News, understand. CNN, social media comments from these from people who I can't interact with real time. I, I even tried. I went back and forth with this one person in the comments. They were thoughtful and polite. I tried to be thoughtful and polite. We just didn't get anywhere because mm -hmm. we're just doing this in chunks of text. Yeah. And so that's kind of what I've come to is is I think it's I'm trying to just pull back to the reality that's in eyesight. Basically. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that that is very wise. And I think um, the the extreme version of that is what you get on psychedelics, which is like you just go totally internal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's even even the people around you, if you're if you've done enough of them, start to fade away and, you, and you're left with just what's going on inside of you, almost absent stimulus. And you realize, oh, God, there's still like <laughs> pockets of disturbance here. You know, like yeah. this is what's getting triggered when somebody is says that they disagree with me religiously or, or politically. And I can address that without even needing that that argument that was not really bothering me. It's like, ah, oh, man, I've always kind of felt like I was going to get kicked out if I had the wrong opinion yeah, yeah. about about something. And like, you can you can address that there. Um, no, and I know the counter argument, which is that if you don't watch the news, if you don't plug into social media, if you don't do this, you won't be informed. But I've come to believe that that doesn't help you be informed. I yeah, think yeah. that most people would agree, my news is good, but the other side's news, Fox News or CNN, that's garbage. That's just propaganda. Oh, dude, it's, I got, I got mis, to do a big argument. With misinformation. My dad <laughs> and my thing is, I don't disagree that theirs is misinformation, but how could you possibly know that yours isn't? Mm -hmm. Because they're saying the exact same thing. And so I've just come to the conclusion, this has, I have to assume this is all misinformation because I have no reason to trust one over the other. Mm -hmm. They can't both be true because they're contradicting each other. This is not a useful way to inform myself. So that's because no I've had people say, oh, how could you, you're not informed. I go, you're not informed. You're just, you're just brainwashed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just think something's true because someone on TV said so it. So I, I had this with my dad two days ago. We, we all got together after Christmas. Um, and I mean, my God, you just described the argument. But what was fascinating is what he went to, is which to him was like the, oh, yeah, well, we can't do this. He said, so what are we supposed to do? Only believe the things that we see with our own eyes? And I was like, that's a, well, first off, what are we supposed to do is exactly the right question. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know the answer, but like. But I'm suggesting that it's tune out from the news. So now the question is, what do we do next? Well, great question. it's like, I actually think that there's, it's, this is what Descartes did. And I don't think he got it right. But he said, like, I'm going to pull all the way back to like, what do I know? And to him, it was, I think, therefore I am. People mm -hmm. would disagree with that. It's about the body and the mind, all this kind of stuff. But I think what's interesting is like, instead of, instead of saying, oh, no, the news is here and I have to like keep this frontier like i cannot i cannot mentally concede the territory that i need to know what's happening in this world mm -hmm. this giant sphere of eight billion people like i need to pretend mm -hmm. that i have some understanding of it instead go i'm gonna fall all the way back 
to first principles. What do I know? And I'm going to rebuild it brick by brick. And I don't know where I will wind up, how how far the bricks will actually stack up, you know? But I think it's, to me, that's the right approach is instead of like going, I can't give that up because then how am I going to interact with the world? Like I need to is just go, this is this could all be a simulation. Let's just start there. Yeah, yeah. Am I sure? That, that Unless you're going to try to take significant action. Unless mm-hmm. you're going to do more than just be upset or talk to the people around you. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Then then go out and gather information. Well, even then, then you can wind up with Adolf Hitlers very easily, which are sure that the Jews are bad, which mm-hmm. are sure that they're ready to take significant action, and they know that they need to wipe them off the face of the earth or else bad things will happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, this... we. Was that just a Patreon question last week? We had a question last week, which was how do you like, or is it better to just go full steam at something without, you know, even if you're not sure, even if, if you're not sure if it's, it's good the right or bad. Thing yeah. Because yeah. then you'll accomplish more. Yeah. And we, we said no, because you want to accomplish. But also, I, I, you know, now that I hear that question again, I can understand where it comes from because some people will be like, I don't know if I have the right business idea. Like, is this the one? And they wind up dithering in that regard. And if someone well, wants to frame the question, question is, how much harm would be caused if you were wrong? Well, so I think a good business idea is watch bands. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, how much harm will be caused if I'm wrong? I'll lose money. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think that the Jews are causing all the problems <laughs> in the world. I'm going to try to exterminate all the Jews. Okay, well, what would happen if I was wrong? Mm-hmm. I would be killing millions of people for no reason. Okay, it seems worse. So mm-hmm. maybe let's make sure we get that one right. Mm-hmm. So I think you can. T- I think you can kind of vary your stop and go based mm-hmm. on what happens if you're wrong. Yes. And I and I think that there's different times in your day for different levels of introspection. Like I'm not constantly rebuilding the world from square one mm-hmm. in my daily interactions. I do that. I lay in my bed. Maybe I'm microdosing. Maybe I'm just doing deep breaths. And that's when I go back to my internal experience. But when I'm operating in the world, I am at some frontier of there, I have this business. There are people out there. They're taking my course. I can trust the scores that they're giving me mm-hmm. on it. Like I, I uh, assume those things that we generally assumed to be true about our experience to be true mm-hmm. without building them up, uh, building it up from a first experience. Oh, yeah. I'm not principle. actually, I mean, personally, I'm not actually pulling necessarily back into just the only thing I know is my body and this could mm-hmm. be a simulation, even mm-hmm. though I actually believe we might be in a simulation. I'm specifically pulling away from the news and social media and forums. Got it. So you're going, if, if this is the center, you're going to like here. Yeah. Got it. Oh, dude, I was, I mean, at one point I was just, I, I like to talk shit, uh, shit about sports, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I was in, in sports forums and then I was making, you know, people would write comments and then I would write comments. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? I'm, ar- I'm arguing about if Ben Simmons is better than James Harden with a stranger. This trade will either happen or it won't. This conversation will have no <laughs> impact. You know what I mean? It's not like we get to vote. It's not like if I can convince this guy that we should do yeah. the trade, then all of a sudden the trade will happen. It's like, this is a complete waste of time. I'm going to debate with a stranger. We're both going to get frustrated. Yeah. Not going to influence the outcome. And then James Harden's going to get traded to the Nets. What a waste of time. (laughs) Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description. And we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.